So this is what I tell people, like, right? They say to me, okay, fine. Try to go to a store and hand them a gold coin or a silver coin and see if you get anything. Okay, it won't work. Probably, probably it won't work. But it might work, giving them a substitute for gold going back in time. And I understand that's good. That's the historical argument. But that still is currently what you're doing. So then why can't you go into a store and give them gold and, uh, and, then, and then get something? Why can't you do it directly? Well, that's just that's just legal tender laws um, because they can, you know they have to account for you know what their what their expenses are in dollar terms so that they don't you know, cheat on their taxes and this is all this is all artificial because basically because the government said you can't do that and we got used to it so that's what we do now and that's that's just how things are but still that doesn't change the fact that when you are going into a store and giving them these receipts for whatever it is that you're buying, that you're, you are still exchanging the gold value of those receipts. You're not exchanging those receipts, you're exchanging the gold value of those receipts. So this is what I tell people, like, right? They say to me, okay, fine, try to go to a store and hand them a gold coin or a silver coin and see if you get anything. Okay, it won't work. Probably, probably it won't work, but it might work. Because if you, if you go to your local shop and say, look, I don't have any money, but I have this gold coin. And I can show you that it's worth this much. You know, here's the spot price. Here, take this. Give me a thousand dollars, fifteen hundred dollars, two thousand dollars of stuff. And he might say yes. He might. He might not. Okay, fine. But let's reverse this. Okay. Now I can tell them, and I can be a hundred percent sure of this. Go into a store with a whole fistful hundred dollar bills that cannot be exchanged for any amount of physical gold anymore. Let's say they can't because the spot price of gold has gone to a million dollars or a trillion dollars, whatever it is. You can't do it. Nobody will accept any dollars for any gold because there is no gold. Try to buy anything with that lot of cash. Try. You won't be able to buy anything with it. I'm sure of it. Because in every hyperinflationary economy that has ever existed in the world, the 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 exchange rate between doll, between that currency and gold goes to infinity. And at that point, you cannot buy anything. So that proves that when you give over your dollars for those goods that you want in that store, you are actually exchanging the gold value of those dollars. You're not exchanging the dollars themselves. And if those dollars have no gold value, you can't get anything. I'm 100% sure of that. We did a little experiment at a local farmer's market in the small town where we live uh, about a month or two ago. I walked up to uh, one of the booths that was selling, I believe it was honey, and I asked, uh, do you take silver? And the first person who was helping me looked at me with this quizzical, lost expression on her face. But right behind her, the guy who seemed to be running the shop uh, leaned forward and said, you mean real silver? I said, yeah, real silver. He said, oh, sure, sure. Uh, <laughs> and when I spoke with uh, uh, one of our farmers that we, uh, that we interview on here, he said, you need to understand that farmers talk to each other and their feet are, they're, they're down to earth people. They're rooted in reality, in real things, in, in natural laws, that sort of things. And if after you walked away, if you had done a transaction in, in silver with uh, one uh, seller, the people at the neighboring booths would, ev would immediately have been inquisitive and inquiring about what was that? What did you, what did you just do? That there, there is somewhere in us, inside of all of us, that instinctive recognition of the, the true value of real money, uh, but that we really have been dumbed down to no longer think about it and no longer recognize it. Um, it's, it sounds like what you're saying is, uh, and I, I guess I'd like, I'd like to get your feedback on that. I claim that this little experiment I did was with some people that had their feet on the ground because they are producers of real things. They work with their hands, they work with nature, with animals, and they produce a, a good that's you know, desirable, in this case, honey, uh, to people who need to eat. Uh, do you believe that there's, that there's this uh, mind shift that's happened over as we've far, formed larger and larger complex supply chains and big cities, we get farther and farther, you know, removed from the reality of our food supply, among other things, uh, that it's going to take, they're going to get rap, more rapid recognition on people who are gr well grounded than people who are uh, really, really uh, acclimated to the, to the uh, so substitution of everything system that we're, we're all living in the modern world. Yeah, well, it, it will be faster among the people who work with their hands and the people that have a connection with the physical world because the, the you know, money is physical. You can't spiritualize it. That's a big problem. 
And we, I think we talked about, you know, the, the, the golden cat. Idolatry. That's a, that's a yep. twisting of the, of the spiritual. That's, it's, it's a very big no-no, not just because God said don't, but it messes with your mind is what it does. That's why he doesn't want us to do it, because <laughs> we get confused and we don't know what's what. Um, you know, it's the problem with being, you know, a spiritual, physical being with a mind and a soul. It's, you got confused parts and you got to figure out how to deal with this planet. Uh, so it's not it, but it's not necessarily that, that the physical, the ones with the physical connection will realize it quicker. The ones with the, you know, that are used to substitutes of substitutes of substitutes and, and like, they will also get it very quickly, very quickly. But when exactly, when, when the dollar can't buy anything. So like, look in a state where the dollar can't buy anything, you're going to have to think very quickly of how you're going to get food. And where are you going to, what are you going to say to yourself? Well, maybe if this huge pile of dollars is going to work, maybe a pile twice as high is going to work. No, it's not. Okay. So where are you going to go? Uh, you're going to, okay, I have this chair. I have this table. I, all automatically you're just like, you're, you're, you're rooted right back to the physical world because you have no other choice. Right. You can't, you can't go anywhere. So, so ju it just happens to be that the good, the physical good that is the best at, you know, dividing value happens to be uh, gold and silver. That's just what it happens to be. So even those people that have no idea what gold and silver is, why anyone would want it, when they can't, when their money substitutes no longer work, that's where they will go to almost immediately. And they will sell whatever they can for gold and silver because there is no other choice, right? That we're always forced into the same conclusion. Even if they don't get it now, they will get it. Um, and there's nothing that they can do about it. <laughs> is this a, uh, a first world problem? Let me say that differently. Is this a East versus West problem? Is, is this primarily a United States and Europe problem where most of Asia and Africa and all the other countries of the world already get it? They've always gotten it. It's tradition. It's in their culture. They totally understand the intrinsic value of metals. And it's just those who are in the in the Western civilizations that uh, have lost their connection. Oh, well, they've lost their immediate connection. And it, it goes deeper. It goes much deeper than that. Like in, in the the more the more inflated any sector of society gets, the more disconnected it gets from reality, whether we're talking about money we're talking about education like you know what what's the sector that gets the most government inflated inflated government money in in the western world it would be like you know this liberal colleges or universities where you learn gender theory and i don't know what that what they're you know you know what i'm talking about like all this crazy stuff there's no men there's no women and and like and people with any grounding in physical reality will look at them and like what the hell are you talking about and they're like well of course it's a theory but well, why are they why are they so disconnected from even the most basic physical reality? There are boys and girls in the world because they've been getting so much inflated money that they, they just lose in touch with all of reality, not just what money is, but what males and females are. Okay. That, that's how far it's gotten. But like when this whole gravy train is cut off and the dollar can't buy anything and the source of their, the inflation just dies, then, you know, they're going to go to, you know, they're going to go to Berkeley tomorrow to teach their course on gender theory and no one's going to be there. And they're going to be like, what do I do now? Use my dollars to buy food. I can't do that either. So, you know, I guess I'm going to have to sell my house and get some gold and silver. It'll be that quick. And then all this gender stuff is going to go away very quickly. Uh, so the, the degree of disconnection has gotten just way out of proportion in the West. And the, yeah, generally speaking, the closer you are attached to the physical world, the more you understand. You don't have to be Mises to understand that gold has value, but but Mises he, he grew up you know in the 20th century when modernity started to happen, so he had to like sort of take all of this conceptual stuff which nobody had a need to understand because it was just natural. As I currently have four financial advisors who are referring or are interested in referring their clients to us for acquiring physical gold and silver. In the past. That would have been unthinkable to them. Some of their employers will only let them talk to their clients about mutual funds and stocks and bonds and things that they can be kept in brokerage accounts under management, that sort of thing. And yet, the, some of them are breaking ranks with that and saying, no, I'm, I, I'm going to talk to my people about real things. Because what they say to me is they're really concerned for the good of their 
people that they work with. They actually care about the good of the people they work with. And they're saying, if I only keep them within the universe of derivative-based paper financial products and things like that, uh, they may be going to get hurt in a way that I can't help protect them from. Uh, any thoughts you have on that before we wrap up? Yeah, well, we'll see more of that happening when derivatives and and you know mainstream finance aren't working out. You know, the 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 Nasdaq is has broken through its 200-week moving average for the first time since 2008. Uh, bonds are way down. Bond investors are not getting their returns. Equities investors are not getting their returns, and and, and the mainstream financial sector is feeling under pressure. Like, what do I do now? Um, so the, they'll turn to more traditional. You know, backing <laughs> uh, because there, there's nowhere else to go, and you'll start seeing more like you know. So the people that were thinking about it, but they didn't want, it, but they were making so much money in the mainstream, so they you know, they didn't want to talk about it. But now they're starting to talk about it, and then in the end, when everything collapses, even the dollar diehards will be like, well, I guess I got to buy as much gold as possible. But most of them will be too late by then. Um, so everyone's going to turn in the end. It's just we want we want the more honest people. It's like, it's like a filter. Like you start with the most honest, uh, you know, hardcore people that will, you know, that will die on this hill even if they never see gold rise above two thousand. But they know it's right, so they they never got anywhere financially. But they started spreading the money message, and then in the next generation and this and that. I mean, Ron Paul has been at this since what nineteen fifties, nineteen sixties, and you know, he's still alive, thank God. And may, maybe he'll see the day. I, I, pray, I pray to God he will, because he's the one who got me into this. Um, so, yeah, the, 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 main, the mainstream will turn just because they'll see that we're making a lot of money, and that's what they want. In the end, money unites everyone. It unites them for evil or for good. And as money turns harder and more honest, you'll see more good people coming out of the woodwork. <laughs>